Now anyone will tell you that getting to the top spot of Google's organic search results is a constant uphill battle. You need to keep you need to keep updated with the latest Google updates. You also need to continue building backlinks. You also need to build internal links and you also need to obviously continue adding new content to your website and working on your social media and it's it's just a uphill battle that a full-time business owner may not have the time to do um, which is why people like me provide SEO services but that's not the subject of this video today's video is about how to claim the featured snippet now the featured snippet is one of the most important parts of the SERP because it is in, in many aspects it is the it, it is position number zero it's the first thing um, that people see when they're searching for a keyword that you're trying to target but this is not a, for a keyword it's usually for a question like for instance how do you win the feature snippet um, it's a question now if you take a look at the screenshot there's the feature snippet that has won this is from mongols and they have done a very good job of winning it but just because they made it to the featured snippet um, in this instance or today does not mean that they will be in the feature snippet tomorrow because Google keeps testing this and so your feature snippet if you're targeting the feature snippet you need to be very precise and you need to be and you need to know what Google is looking for um, when you're writing content for the feature snippet and that is something we're going to discuss in this video so Guys, if you like the video, like and subscribe. Also, I provide SEO services. If you're looking for an SEO service, you're looking for a consultation, uh, click the link below, fill out the form, and I'll get in touch with you. So, let's take a look at what you need to do to win the featured snippet. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the featured snippet, this is how it looks. I showed this previously as well. And there are different types of featured snippets. And then there's also the knowledge panel, but that's for a separate video. Um, there are like three or four different types of featured snippets. So you've got the paragraphs featured snippet, you've got the bulleted numbered lists, you've got tables, and you've got videos. Now, we're not gonna go look, take a look at videos because usually Google is pulling videos from YouTube. So that's something that we're not probably gonna look at, but we're gonna look at paragraph, bulleted, numbered lists, and tables, and see how we can optimize our content uh, to make it to the featured snippet. And also, um, you know what you can precisely do in terms of uh, looking at what's ranking in the featured snippet and then optimizing your featured snippet um, to outdo what is currently what Google is currently showing and also maybe you know finding featured snippet opportunities I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a separate video about you know, finding featured snippet opportunities but for now we're gonna look at how to win the featured snippet so the first one is the paragraph uh, snippets. These are most commonly found snippets if you're searching for something with a how, who, why, when, or whatever. Um, this usually comes from uh, Wikipedia in some in 40% of the cases. But this, but you can also rank for these if your um, if your website is uh, is more informational. Uh, it's possible that Google will pull this uh, paragraph out from your website. It needs to be structured correctly, something that we'll, that we'll look at. What we've got is the bulleted numbered snippet. Um, and this is mostly an ordered list or an unordered list. It's a list of like, like for instance, like top five movies for 2021 or top 10 SEO tools, something like that. We've got, got a screenshot over here of how it looks. And this is basically, you know, it's a how and a what kind of a question um, that would that will make it to this featured snippet. Um, we'll look at how to target this as well in this video. And uh, we've also got the table snippet. Um, and the table snippet is more of an informational, like it's a, it's, it's a content informational table, uh, like you see in the screenshot over here. And for instance, it's showing uh, sizes for men's pants. So it's a 28 to 30, which is a 71 to 76 waist centimeter. So this is basically a more, um, informational content driven um, you know something like, like something that you would need from an excel sheet um, and this is also you know something that's very hard to rank for in the feature snippet uh, but as we will see that there, 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 there are ways to do it um, but you need to position yourself correctly finally there's a video snippet and as I said that in some instances Google will just display a video from YouTube um, something that there's more than one video 
But if you have a video on your own website and it's not on YouTube, um, like for instance, HubSpot is ranking in this case for this feature snippet. And so it's possible to rank, but you know, unless you're HubSpot or one of these top now websites with lots of video on, videos on your um, pages, it's not gonna be, this is not something you're gonna rank for. Um, and there's really, really little that you can do. And so we'll focus on the three other feature snippets that I just mentioned. Okay, now before I go into the actual uh, techniques, I just wanna say that um, Google is constantly testing and developing new types of feature snippets and their combination for various search queries um, in, a, in, in, a, in a way to enhance the user's experience, but they also wanna see what uh, what information people find more useful than other types of information. And so they'll, this is something that you may rank for today and tomorrow, but maybe the day after tomorrow, someone will do a better job than you. And then they will outrank you and they'll get more traffic. But this is worth the effort because A, you're optimizing the content on your website, which is always good for users. And then just optimizing for the feature snippet means that you will get literally four or five extra traffic that you're currently getting on the page. That also means more traffic for your website. And if you're selling products on your website or you're trying to build a brand, that's obviously good news. So it's worth putting in the effort. But in order to rank for the featured snippet, you need to be on page one. To start with, I looked at literally hundreds of featured snippets uh, in the process of making this video. And Ahrefs did a study recently uh, recently maybe like a year ago and you know all the f all the feature snippets came from our website that were ranking in the top 10 of SERPs and I would say 90% of those feature snippets are coming in from websites ranking at the top six uh, in Google's in Google's SERPs so the first thing you'd want to do is you really want to rank your page on the first page of Google at least even, even if it's on the number 10 spot and then you optimize for the featured snippet. So if you're not on, you're, if your page is not one of the top 10 pages that Google is ranking for the keyword um, or the key phrase or the question that you're trying to rank for, then you're gonna have to work on your ranking first and then you know optimize for the featured snippet. So that's the first thing you'd need to do. The other thing you'd want to do, you want to choose your keywords. And this is very important because if you choose the wrong keywords, um, you're going to be competing against a lot of uh, heavy hitters. Um, and that's going to be harder to rank for the feed snippet. And then secondly, you, uh, you want to find like any other keyword, you want to find a keyword that's not as a competitive, um, but it's triggering the feature snippet, yet at the same time, it's not competitive. So usually what I would do is I would go for a long tail keyword uh, or key phrase more precisely and what that long tail key phrase would be it would be like a question it will be like a statement um, that's most frequently asked in, in the industry um, for instance let's say you're a farm and you want to teach consumers how to select the best fruit um, you, you're not gonna have luck if you're trying to target Apple or best Apple or largest Apple, you're, that's just not, not gonna work for you. What you wanna do is, if you're targeting Apple, you wanna find, you, you wanna target a keyword like, which is the reddest Apple in California? Or, which is the largest Apple in California? Or, how to find the sweetest Apple in California? And these are the kind of a keywords that would you'd wanna target. And what you do is, you go ahead you type in these keywords into your Google search box and you see if they're, if they're triggering a response, uh, a, a, um, a feature snippet response. Um, and if they are, you make a list of them and then you go ahead and you start targeting them. Um, so the other way to do this would be to uh, take a look at Google also, uh, people also ask. Um, so people also ask, or PAA as it's called, um, if you search for Apple, uh, I mean, it pulls up quite a few things. It'll pull up Apple Watch, Apple TV, Apple, and, and but if you're looking for Apple as a fruit, um, then you, it shows you a picture of Apple as a fruit when you're searching for it in the SERP box, and it says Apple fruit, uh, fruit fly trap, Apple uh, fruit benefit. It shows you this whole list of keywords for Apple. 
And then what you can do is you can, uh, you know, just search for apple as a fruit and see if it um, triggers uh, the feature snippet. In this case, it does not trigger the feature snippet. But if you extend this, for instance, um, to which is the largest apple in the US. Um, and so the idea is to change your, uh, is to change this into a question that people would normally ask. And the other advantage of, of taking this approach is that a lot of people are doing search via voice and they're using Alexa or they're using Google Assistant. And when they ask, uh, this is where this information is being pulled from. And so if you do this correctly, you got to be also optimized for uh, voice search. So the snippet is where the voice search picks up the information from. So keep that in mind. Um, the best questions are, as I mentioned earlier, is the why, the when, the how. These are the three best questions you can add. Um, other questions is how, does, will, when, is. I have, I've put up a chart here. This is from SEMrush. And this shows like all the, t all the various uh, whys and hows that target the featured snippet. Uh, and this data is invaluable if you take a look at this and this just should help you formulate a question, search for a question that you can target for the feature snippet. And hopefully also has enough um, search volume so that you're targeting the right uh, people and you're also targeting enough people to making it worth the effort. Um, when the featured snippet is to um, position yourself uh, your feature snippet correctly and that will require formatting it. Now, how you format your feature snippet is one of the is one of the things that Google is looking at. So if it's a paragraph, it's going to be featured differently as compared to if, it's, if it was a list or a video or a table. So make, that, make sure that you know what feature snippet you're targeting. So the type of feature snippet you could earn easily, uh, it's, easy, it's pretty easy to figure out um, based on the type of content you have. So the idea with the feature snippet is to be as succinct or as short and precise as possible. Uh, I would say make sure that you answer the question within 300 characters. Um, if you can shorten it even further, that's even better because the shorter the better and that gives Google an opportunity to quickly answer the question instead of going around in circles. So now you can also add uh, images to your feature snippet. One image maybe perhaps but make sure that it's uh, the image is formatted in 159 by 197 pixels. So that's basically 160 to 200 pixels. Usually Google does a very bad job of pulling these images. Um, and so just be aware of that, that even though you might have an image, you will might not pull it. But if it does, uh, if you wanted to pull the image, you want to improve the odds of that it pulls the image into the feature snippet, may like your logo or something, then make sure um, it is formatted correctly, and if it doesn't show well, if you if you win the feature snippet, it doesn't show well. Try resizing or reformatting um, the image. So that's just a side note on images. So the next thing you'd want to do is you'd want to date your content. And I see a lot of people making this mistake. I have a, I had a client come to me the other day and say, you know, I was ranking on the feature snippet, but now I'm not ranking on the feature snippet. And when I took a look, was that uh, a more recent post uh, had outdone them on the feature snippet because there, were, there was a later date on the snippet and that meant that Google went for the most recent post and they just, uh, just did away with them. So in a way, uh, if you add a date to your feature snippet, that greatly improves your odds of ranking. And um, this is something that uh, Google has been doing for quite a few years. Um, the vast majority of feature snippets, if you go through them, like, you know, a lot of people have gone through them. I've gone through them. People at, Sem at SEMrush have gone through them. And they s they've seen that uh, most of the snip of the content making it to the feature snippet, at least 70% of it, uh, was posted within the last two to three years. Uh, and so if you had the most recent content, you have the highest odds of making it to the feature snippet. The next thing is you'd want to use uh, subfolders very wisely. Um, my research shows that if you have a very long URL, uh, it's not going to make it to the feature snippet. So 
best thing would be is to have your feature snippet on www.domain.com slash the page um, that's one folder and www.slash the page slash the page or slash the category slash the page will also work but you'll have a better opportunity if it's just one layer deeper so just one folder deeper if this if it's if this is something you can't help then obviously two folders deep but you don't want to go any deeper than that because the research shows that a, uh, that a l very long URL is far less likely to be featured uh, to get a feature snippet so one to two one to three subfolders is probably the sweet spot I put up a, uh, a graph here this is also from Samrush this is how they presented it and this will give you an idea as to uh, you know this two subfolders is like 37.3 percent ideally you'd want to go for just one subfolder that's my that has been my experience so just make sure that you know you're optimizing in that case as well um, finally the final thing that I normally do to win the feature snippet is I would I would make a page um, with multiple feature snippets or a page that's targeting multiple feature snippets but related to the content on that page for instance I would make a page on um, how to train uh, puppies and then I would have I would target a feature snippets for instance a lab uh, can Labradors be trained as puppies and then answer that within um, 30 characters and then another one was can um, German Shepherds be trained as puppies and then answer that and just have this entire page like around a thousand words and targeting literally a dozen or two dozen feature snippets and the, this approach has two benefits number one is it helps people that come onto your website that's not necessarily a feature snippet they come onto the website and they're reading this information and they find this information really useful because you're just answering the question um, the other thing is that once you once you, ha you have a higher chance of making it to the featured snippet because people are looking at this and they're uh, it's easy to read and then they click onto your website and they find a lot more information so in a way you're keeping people on your page for longer you're also improving the click-through rate which is key to going from number 10 to number one on Google and so this is a this is a strategy that I use to this day and if you're doing 20 feature snippets on one page um, you know even even with a 1 to 20 ratio there's a 1% chance that you will make it to the feature snippet for at least one of those questions if it's well optimized and you followed my tips over here now there are quite a few other things that you could probably do I've not found it relevant and there are a lot of other articles and videos that talk about that but I've not found it relevant to ranking on the feature tips and the feature snippet so guys if you like the video like and subscribe and uh, leave a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video.